energy like now that you're here and you know it's just days away now I'm really enjoying it I'm really happy and well this is um, just like a normal five wheel for me um, I feel ready now you did a face-off on the waterfront with Amanda there. She has all the belts and stuff. Like, is that just a, a nice last reminder and bit of motivation of what you're fighting for this week? Yeah, for sure. We, we have seen each other. It's the second time we face off. And, um, yeah, it's a motivation to see the belt on her and knowing that, that I'm able to, to win that and to now to have my own picture with that belt. And people kind of on those face-offs have pointed to your size a lot and, you know, when they're comparing the two. Um, do you see that too? Like, do you feel like you're, you're the bigger fighter and that can play the impact in the fight? Well, yeah, I, I've been always one of the biggest fighters in, in the division. And, um, yeah, I feel in a good shape. Uh, training camp was really good. Um, I'm, I'm physical uh, on my best shape ever. And, yeah, I feel strong. I feel nice. And, and I, I think that's going to be a, a, an advantage for me. What do you just make of Amanda at this point in her career? Like, she had the loss to Juliana for her first one in a very long time, and she rebounded, but she's admitted that she thought about retiring after that fight. Like, do you feel like she is maybe as invested in her, the sport right now as you are, who is, like, obviously very driven to get that title? Oh, definitely. I'm very hungry for the title. I'm, I'm very focused on that, and, and that's my my main and only goal now in my life and I don't know what's on her, on her mind maybe I don't know if she wants to retire or not and we'll never know how mentally it's the other fire going to come but I'm expecting that her her best version and, and I'm thinking that she's going to if she wants to retire she's going to want to retire as a as a champion so uh, I'm not I'm not taking it in in the easy way I'm not um, I'm not seeing that uh, I'm expecting her best version, and, and that's it. And we see it a lot in these scenarios when you know, a fighter like yourself could beat a dominant champion like herself. Uh, she'd probably get an immediate rematch. Is it your expectation that you're going to have to not only beat her once, but probably twice in a row? Yeah, we, we don't know. I'm, I'm focusing on winning this fight. I don't know about um, what's going to happen next. If, it, if, if it's the case, I'm sure we can make an, a rematch. But, yeah, let, let, let's see what happens first in this fight. And in the front, uh, right here. Amanda's obviously, she's been champ pretty much her whole UFC career. I know she had the hiccup against Juliana, but she got it back in her next fight. So I'm curious, were there moments maybe when you weren't preparing, you didn't have a fight lined up, that you were mentally preparing to fight Amanda throughout your career? Yeah, I've been watching Amanda for a long, long time. I have always had her in mind. Now I have always prepared for her. It's not just this training camp. I have prepared for her for a long time. And actually... Uh, especially when when, the, when when I won to get Beta, I, I thought it was a possibility to get, to get a call for the belt um, because she was number one two. She she was undefeated and by by her by her credentials, I know that it was a, a possibility. So since then, I was planning already training for for Amanda just in case. So looking back throughout those years, how have you seen her development and growth as a fighter? Or is she still kind of relatively the same fighter? She just kind of got improved all around. Oh, we see her that that she she has been improving. She. Um, she now she added the south part game to to his to his um, to his tool to her tools and well it's, uh, as a fighter if you're not improving what are you doing here and and, and she she has done it she has been improving uh, in every fight uh, she she had a, a little um, slide down in with Juliana but she she came back better so I'm expecting her her best version. Well, speaking of that southpaw, when she did fight Juliana, she came out kind of threw her off by switching stances. What did when you were watching that? What did you think when you saw her come out southpaw? Uh, we thought that yeah, she, she adapted that to to her game plan, and we thought it was it was good. It it, it didn't scare us. It if if the fight was going to come sooner or later, it didn't scare us because we always train in the gym with with the both guards, with southpaw and and, and the normal guard. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared for that, too. The final one for me, a lot of fans and pundits have been, they label Amanda as just the greatest combat sports, the female athlete, not just MMA, but boxing, Muay Thai, everything. So I'm curious how you view her legacy in combat sports. 
My legacy? Her legacy? Oh yeah, she. For me, she is the greatest of all time. For me, she is, and and that's what makes it even more great for me to to be able to have this opportunity against her to be one of of, of the greatest. I respect her. It's an honor for me, and and yeah, but but. Uh, as much as I respect her, for, for me, is in this fight, I'm coming with the mentality of, of winning, and it's not kill or die in that fight. For me, it's kill or kill, and, and, and that's it. And, uh, but it doesn't take off the, the, the honor that I have and, and the, the respect I have for her. Irene, over here? Right here? Uh, just kind of where you were, right there. Um, <laughs> do you remember where you were and, and when you found out that you got the title shot? Do you remember that moment uh, when, yeah. when you got the news? Yeah, for sure. I was training uh, in my gym, in Lobo Gym. I was um, just ending my, my wrestling uh, jiu-jitsu session. It was, I was two weeks from fighting the Raquel Pennington, so I was ending training camp for Raquel Pennington, and we were just finishing the, the session and saw my phone, and I saw uh, Mick Maynard call, and I returned the call, and he was like, okay, we gotta, we got to say this to you. Um, Juliana is senior. He, she broke her ribs, and uh, we wanted to offer you the, to fight Amanda in her place. And I was like, okay, so Raquel is, is, is out? Yeah, yeah, Raquel is off. Okay, oh, great, yeah, we're in. Oh, yeah, so, so we need you in two days in New Jersey so, to make the press conference. So it was, was really crazy. So one day I was preparing for, to fight Raquel, and the next day I was fighting for the world title against Amanda, the greatest. And, yeah, it was really crazy, but it was awesome. How inspiring was it to see your teammate Alexa Grasso win the flyweight title? Uh, very inspiring. Very, it's a great motivation for me seeing her accomplish that, and not just accomplishing, but the way she accomplished that. She she shined that night. She she won to another one one of the greatest in of times. Uh, Valentina Shevchenko is not a, a, an easy fight, as we all know that. And in how she did it and how he, how she managed all this. And it, w it was awesome. It was uh, great to see that. And someone I know who's going to be spending more time at your gym, uh, Lupi Godinez, who's actually from here. Uh, yeah. she, she trains here as well. Uh, just how impressed have you been with her run in the UFC, someone that I know has done quite well recently? Oh, yeah, she's doing great. We are glad to have her here in, in, in the team now. She, she's, she's coming soon to, to Mexico. And I, I think she, she made a, a great decision in coming with us. And she, she got really... Um, get along with all the team. She she um, uh, she's going to be representing Mexico really really good. She already has, and, but but I, I know that um, here here is going to to have uh, much more improvements, and and I know we're we're going to have another world title in her. And last question for me: What do you think of Vancouver so far? Oh, it's awesome! I love Vancouver. I never have been here before. I, I never knew Canada before. I'm really excited to be here. It's beautiful. I'm enjoying it. Irina, just two to your left here. Um, you mentioned uh, Alexa's win over Valentina, and when you think about it, you know Valentina and Amanda Nunes for a long time the faces of their divisions, the rivalry between them. When you and Alexa talk about how far the two of you have come and how now she has dethroned one of the greatest of all time, and now it's your turn, what are some of the conversations the two of you have together? Um, when she got to Guadalajara after her fight with Valentina, she she went to my home and showed me her belt. And, and the first thing she said was, you're next. And, and I was, no, this is your time. Congratulations, and you're next. And it the, the, was a, a great to see her like that. And, and, yeah, we look back. We have been looking back all this time. And, and, and yeah, it has been a long journey. And, and it's nice that we have share this together. We have lived this together almost uh, in the same time. And we made our MMA debuts together, Invicta debuts together, and now we are almost in the same path in, for the belt together, almost in the same time, just months uh, from, on difference. But yeah, it's been great to share this with her. And just one more for me. Obviously, it's been a banner year for Mexico. Brandon Moreno completes his quadrilogy. Yair Rodriguez is headlining International Fight Week. When I talk to uh, you and all of these fighters, there's just such an immense pride to be representing Mexico and to be having so much success. What is it about the Mexican culture that has you as fighters so happy to represent your country? Um, um, me personally, it's uh, I see someone else's success and... Uh, it gives me strength. When, when Brandon won, 
uh, I was so excited, so motivated. I cried when Jair won. I cried too, and I was so motivated. Then Alexa also cried, and I was so motivated. And and I know I don't know. It's something about about Mexican DNA that we love combat sports. We have a great history in boxing. We have uh, great teachers in Canelo, in Chavez, in Barrera, and those amazing fighters. I, I don't know. We, we like we, we like the fight. We we love the heat of the fight. We're not going backwards. We're, we're always going forward, and and we have a lot to learn from them. And the, I think those those fighters represent all of Me Mexicans' heart. Not just fighters, but the pe all the people, all Mexicans. Uh, have that in, in, in their DNA, in their hearts. They were really, really um, passionate about things. Right here. Just to build on that, uh, what's the fan reaction been like at home to Alexa and the other champs and yourself? Are the fans in Mexico getting more uh, behind MMA? Oh yeah, I've been I've been having a lot of support from Mexico, more than I thought I would have, and it's been really nice to see all the messages, all the support. It I. I my, my coach says, t t tell me to leave the phone alone, but I love to see all the messages. It, it fulfills me really nice. And, yeah, they, they have been supporting us very well. So UFC Mexico 2024, we hope? I hope so, yeah, definitely, definitely. Last one for me. I mean, when you look at Amanda's loss to, to Juliana, do you read much into that? I know she said she had some things going on before that fight, and she did come back and avenge it. But do you see things from that fight that you feel you can build on? Oh yeah, for sure. There's uh, I, I can I, I study a lot, a lot of uh, her fights. I can take some some information from that fight, from her losses, from her winnings. Um, I knew I knew that it, she wasn't. 100% there in that fight, and I understand that because it, it happened to me also. And but yeah, yeah, we could, we could take a little of, of every fight of her. Sorry, when you say it happened to you also, when did it happen to you? What were the the circumstances? Uh, for for the Holy Home fight, uh, I was uh, I just I, I got COVID and I got a fracture, and you know there there are some things that happened before the fight that that um, did, didn't help me. And, and yeah, I, I, I didn't recover well from COVID. And I, actually, I got negative from COVID just one week after, before going to, to Holy Home fight. And yeah, it affected me. It's not an excuse. I, I, I fought the first version of, of Holy and not taking away anything from her, but I know how it feels to, to go in there not being at your 100%. Thank you. Thank you. Question here. Uh, uh, in an earlier episode of Embedded this week, you talked about how you have a vision of you and Grasso getting a picture taken together, uh, both with a belt each. I was wondering, is visualization something you've done a lot throughout your career, and do you have a vision for what's going to happen on Saturday night? Yeah, for sure. We have uh, a photo of, of both of us holding a, a, a belt from, from a company in Mexico, from, from a, a league, a MMA league in Mexico, where we start our careers. And... And yeah, I, I see. I, we were, we looked so so little in that picture, so young. And and I know that we're going to to make the the photo again, but with the UFC belts, definitely. One more thing from the side. First off, welcome to Vancouver. Thank you. Aside from looking at Amanda as your opponent, can I just ask you to look at her career, her body of work, how she's been a champion, what she has meant to the female side of the MMA world? Can you just talk about that respect level as opposed to her fighting her on Saturday? Well, yeah, she has done an amazing things for, the, for MMA, for women's MMA. She has accomplished everything that a fighter could accomplish ever, and she has fought the best of the best. And she has shown us that... Well, she she has well reserved the, deserved this this um, this title and and well she she has been here for a long long time she has a lot of, of experience she has nothing more to prove I think and and yeah the, I have nothing but respect for her. You talked about the Mexican fighters, be it boxers or or MMA fighters. Do you feel in your country now? the culture is more receptive to see women like yourself having the kind of success and being praised for it to have that kind of a career. Yeah. Because it's always been male-dominated in your country, correct? Yeah, yeah. For, for our culture, it's not uh, normal to see women fighting. And it was hard at the beginning because we were uh, questioned about why are we doing this? If you're, if you're a girl, you look so nice. Why, are you, you, why do you want to be hit? And we were defending the idea that it's not that I like to be hit. It's like... 
this sport is part of my evolution and for all women's evolution. And uh, it, it doesn't make me less of a woman to be able to fight. And it makes me stronger. It makes me, um, uh, I don't know, it ma makes me more confident. And I, I love mixed martial arts give us more than just punches. It, it gives us uh, a, a nice uh, a knowledge of how, how you can um, connect your mind and your body and how to control yourself and, and also the, the history of all the martial arts that are in, involved in, in MMA. It's very interesting and Mexico is already getting open to the idea and we have more, more um, support from, from our people and I, I, yeah, I believe that we, this is going to be a, a, a big potential sport in Mexico. Thank you. Are you good? Thank you very much.